Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of Planet Coaster College. This is a series in which I'll be making tutorials for those of you who are already familiar with the basic controls and mechanics of the game, but want to delve deeper into more advanced uses of them. It's also for anybody who's stuck trying to make a park with many ideas on what to build, but no way to successfully translate that into the game, or for those who are just interested in the way that I play it without the speed of my usual time lapses. I'll be going through different aspects of making theme parks like scenery, buildings, terraforming, park layouts, and of course coasters. In essence, it's really for the sandbox mode players who are looking into either the creative or the realistic side of playing the game. Now in this first episode I'll be building and talking about wooden roller coasters, what they're like in real life, how you can make them in the game, and some general rants with random tips and tricks. So without further ado, let's get started and build a classic wooden coaster. Now right now if we want to build a wooden roller coaster we're gonna have to head over to the coaster section, custom and two wooden roller coasters which there's only one of right now so that's easy enough and place down the station and I want to very quickly note here that you always want to raise up the station a little bit it just kind of depends on what looks best or works best in your case but they are usually raised and either have just an empty room with supports holding up the rest of the station underneath them or in some cases they have some electrical systems or coaster mechanisms underneath there also, it kind of helps because if you want to have a pre-lift section, go down a little bit before you actually go into the lift hill. We have just enough height to um, have that kind of thing. Uh, basically, you want to make sure that your coaster isn't entirely on the ground. Also, I want to very quickly note before we go on that the trains on the wooden coaster here are pretty important. They might not look that way, but they kind of are. These are the very traditional standard six coaster wooden coaster trains which you see a lot, they're pretty much the most common ones out there and you have them both on very old classic traditional wooden coasters as well as on some of the modern ones. I haven't really looked into the details of what manufacturer these are, um, but the important thing to keep in mind here is that these are coaster trains with pretty large cars and as you can see they'll have like wheels on the front and on the back of each car and that means that these are not very flexible, you can't have tracks that twist around a lot and change directions in a lot of places. So you want to keep the tracks uh, quite smooth and um, not make them change like any kind of direction or banking in very small sections. And also you want to be very careful with inversions and generally avoid them with this kind of wooden coaster. And I want to be very careful on saying this kind of thing because inversions are wooden co on wooden coasters are not unseen in contrary to popular belief, I suppose. Um, but you want to be careful with these kinds of things because there is actually a pretty notorious example of a wooden roller coaster with these trains that had an inversion. Uh, you might know it. I'm talking about Son of Beast. It had a looping in it, but it was so brutal that it had to be taken down. And later, the entire coaster had to be taken down. And just generally, with this kind of wooden coaster, I wouldn't recommend trying inversions. That is usually done with other types of wooden coasters. So they're just usually left for other types, and that's probably a better idea. Anyway, let's get started with the coaster layout itself, and stop talking about the type so much. Just want to keep in mind that this is going to be a somewhat smooth and not too twisty wooden roller coaster. And before I head into the lift, so I kind of wanted to go down and have a small curve before we go there. Just a side note, I'm going to be coming up with the layouts of this coaster along the way. It's just going to be improvisation. And it's mostly about the types of elements and the types of things that you want to keep in mind when you're building this kind of wooden roller coaster instead of making the best wooden roller coaster ever right here on the spot. Now you can see I'm turning off I'm turning on angle snap here because I want to go for a lift hill at about 30 degrees, which is the most common amount. You do find a lot of wooden roller coasters which have just a few less degrees lift hill, but about 30 degrees is a pretty good guideline and I wouldn't want to go too far beyond that. Uh, let's see how tall we can actually make this coaster. I'm trying to see how tall it is right now. I think we can go just a little bit higher than that. Say um, just about 30 meters. I think this is what this will be. Uh, yep, there we go. That's exactly 30 meters. And this will be the end of the lift hill where I wanted to go slightly down so that we can release the coaster from the cable and gravity will take it from that point onward. And we can head straight into the first drop, I would say, at this point. And usually the first drop is, of course, the tallest one, especially in this case where my terrain is just flat and I'm going to build a pretty standard woody 
So I want to make sure to go to the ground and have a pretty nice and intense first drop. I think in this case actually I'll make it quite steep. Wooden roller coasters don't usually have very steep drops, especially uh, not that steep. But I usually make my hills a little bit steeper than I want them to eventually be since the smoothing tool takes out a little bit of the steepness and transitions it a bit after you smooth the track. So this will be a little bit less steep as I smooth it out. Let me grab the entire drop like that and just see if I can smooth it out like that. That should work fine. And usually I also like picking the individual parts of the track to smooth out some parts. So for instance, the transition here from the drop into the horizontal part could be smoothed out just a little bit more. So that's a bit wider. And there we go. I think that's some pretty good shaping. Now after this, I am not really sure what I'm going to do, but I think it's just time to head into the second hill and make that quite simple. Kind of go for a, a standard kind of layout on this coaster. So we're going to go up again, and you always want to make sure that the curve is the largest at the bottom of the drop, where the coaster train is the fastest. Generally, the faster your train goes, the more you want your drops and your curves to be very long. And if it's very slow, you want to make the drop very short, so um, that you're still sort of pressed into your seat. And yeah, I think that's just about a good height. We can end the top of the hill here. And here you can also see that the curve of the top of the hill, I want to make that just a little bit less than the curve down in the bottom here since it's quite fast over here. Um, but I want to grab some airtime, like that moment where you really fly out of your seat on the top of the second hill here. Um, though that could be just a little bit smoother, I think. Let's make that a little bit longer. There we go. And in the meantime, I'm going to want to see how this is actually going to make it. So let's start a test and check the speed of the coaster at that point in time. I would generally always advise to run a test while you're building the coaster. It's going to make things a lot easier and you'll never run into the issue where you're building the coaster and then it turns out that it doesn't actually make it. Like that hill, for example, that's just a little bit slower than I was hoping for. So I think I'll actually... Um, go down a bit more here and also with hills um, just like the bottom of the first drop I want to make it just a little bit taller than I eventually want it to be because if you're grabbing the hill and you're going to smooth it out the smooth tool will make it just a little bit shorter so I usually make my things just a bit taller than I really want them to be and let the smooth tool take it from there generally I don't want to leave any part of the coaster track without having at least touched it with the smoothing tool. And another very quick note that I do want to give about it is that I usually do have a mix between smoothing parts of the track individually and smoothing very large sections. Because if you smooth out a large section, the smoothing tool is kind of going to find a sort of baseline that it follows throughout that section and smooth it all at once. And the kind of effect that it has on the way that the track is going to go it's kind of like this. Say if I make a very small hill and I grab the entire thing and smooth it out at once, the smooth tool is eventually going to go towards flattening this entire hill and stretching it out quite a lot. So you want to be very careful with doing that too much. Let's bring it back down to the shape that it was originally in. And if I really want to preserve the shape of this hill and just kind of smooth out the transitions, around it, uh, then I want to grab these pieces individually, smooth out these parts, and you'll see that the general shape of the hill is still there, while the different parts that I want it to be a bit more smooth are smoothed out a little bit more. So usually I just kind of use a variation between um, smoothing out very small sections and smoothing out large sections. There's no real way, uh, or like wrong or right way to do that kind of thing. It just kind of depends on whatever works best. But generally, I find that it works best to just switch them up both and use them pretty much according to whatever works best in the situation. And at this point, I think I kind of want to go up again. I suppose that could be a little bit smoother. So let's take that out a bit and have another hill, which is, again, of course, a little bit smaller than the past hill. At this point, I think I want to start going down already and start going back to the station, because otherwise we might not even make it. And have a curve around here, which comes back on the back here. Uh, make that a little bit less steep than I just had. This is usually also the point where I like to turn off angle snap, just because 
Turning off angle snap gives you a little bit more control in the curves and the banks. What I personally like in wooden roller coasters is if you do have a lot of variety in it. Of course this is kind of subjective, but most wooden roller coasters that are generally found to be the best do have a lot of variety. So you don't want it to be just hills until you enter the station. You don't want it to be just curves, but you kind of want to switch it up. So go from a hill into a curve and back into a hill and just have all of these different elements uh, that come after each other. And in this case, I think I can still make that a little bit more smooth. Actually have it kind of go up like that. I think that'll be fine. Yep, there we go. I'm looking for the, the very standard look of a wooden roller coaster. Obviously, some of the things that set wooden roller coasters apart from other ones is that kind of feeling of that you're out of control, that the train track is just kind of barging over this wooden track of coaster, which doesn't really seem as safe as steel coasters. And also, you usually, uh, they pack a lot of airtime, a lot of these places where you fly out of your seat. But another thing that makes wooden coasters so special is, of course, the way that they look. So you want to make as much use as you can of the look of these wooden structures. And um, that's also the why I am laying it out like this. So we kind of have this hill that fills in the gap between these two hills. Then maybe after that, we could have a few more hills. And it basically, you get this sort of skyline. And if you're walking around the paths or save this with a car park, you would see this amazing looking skyline of a wooden roller coaster layout. And that's really what we're looking for here. You generally don't want to make it too flat or too compact and really show off all of the curves and the hills of the coaster as much as you can. Especially the transitions, so whenever you go from a hill into a curve or from a curve into another curve, uh, you want to smooth those things as much as you can because these things can be quite rough. And I think that looks quite good. Speed on the entire thing is pretty good as well. You don't want it to slow down too much on these hills. So I'm going to go down there. And maybe what I think we could do is I'm starting to, uh, I'm trying to weigh my options here. We could actually have another hill over here, but so far we already have a lot of hills in this coaster. So what I'm thinking is um, that we could actually add another typical wooden roller coaster element. I think this would be a pretty cool place for a double up. Yeah, basically double ups and double downs are this kind of elements that you see a lot on wooden roller coasters that are quite a lot of fun. Um, and something that you can always add to a wooden roller coaster whenever there's a bit of space where you're not really sure what else to do or there's a very large section where you only want to have one hill. And it basically does what the name says. You go up twice um, or you go down twice. So in this case, I'm going to add this little hill over here and then I'm going to add another hill and that'll be pretty much the top where it's going to crest over. Now again, I want to smooth this out just enough so that this doesn't become one weird curve. I think that'll be fine. It could be banked a little bit more. There's also another thing to keep in mind is that the smoothing tool, if you select very large sections, it is going to get rid of some of your banking. So usually I sort of rebank it as I'm going through it with this smoothing tool. There we go. And smooth out this part of the track. If you're building double ups and double downs though, always be very careful with the smoothing tool because if you use it too much, you're just going to eventually remove the entire double up or double down element in it and it's just going to be one straight section of track, which is pretty boring and not what we're looking for here. Now we're already getting into the second part of the coaster and we've already lost half of our speed, but we do want to get the feeling that the coaster doesn't really lose any speed throughout the entire layout. We want to keep that momentum so I think this last part of the coaster, I want to mostly focus on small twists and turns and hills instead of the large winding hills that we have in the first half. So one of the first things that I want to try in the second part is see if we can get this quick curve in over here. Um, just make that a little bit larger. I think just to smooth it out a bit more. The smoothing tool will eventually uh, take care of that and make it look a bit better than it currently does. And um, after that, I'm looking into possibly making a uh, overbanked curve over the lift hill. We don't have an overbanked curve yet. It's basically one curve where you go up and you're going to go straight at the uh, top of the hill and have a very steep bank. Uh, so basically something like this. And then after this, you go down again. 
And that is really what a very basic overbanked curve looks like. It's a great way to curve around if you want to have a hill in the meantime as well. And in this case, especially, I'm trying to find a way around the lift hill here, and this does so perfectly. Now, this is also the time that I usually go to the back end of the station and add a straight but very slightly inclined piece of track at the end of it, which is the space for the brake run, which you need to actually slow down the coaster before it enters the station, or in some cases to have a transfer track where you can store the second train of the coaster. So with that out of the way, we can pretty much finish the layout of this wooden coaster with a very low and twisty part that makes its way back to the end of that straight piece of track. Which you could also curve a bit into a different direction than the station, I should say. You just want to make sure that you have that straight brake run just before you enter the station. Also a little piece of advice, most wooden coasters try to get as many head choppers as they can, which are these moments when the supports or the track above the track which you're riding on are so close that you almost feel like you're gonna have your head hit by some wooden supports. It never really happens because obviously you want it to be safe, but these moments kind of make the coaster seem faster and more exciting. A bit like where the coaster goes underneath the supports over here, or where the coaster really goes into the support structure at this spot here. I also put a double down element over here so you can actually fly out of your seat quite a bit more at this ending element and make it seem a little bit faster than it really is because at this point the coaster is pretty slow and I'm trying to make my way back into the station without making it seem as if the coaster is very slow. Um, so that also means a lot of curves that are very very close to the ground here and um, switch it up quite a bit until we get into the final helix that brings us back into the brake run. Now with one more curve at the end and a very small hill, this is actually the finished layout of the coaster. And what I haven't really mentioned yet, I will go over the POV and the way it looks in a minute, is that this is really a sort of classical out and back kind of wooden roller coaster where you go out there all the way to the other side of the map almost, um, turn around and have all of these different hills and twists all the way back to the station, which is the way that you see many of these, especially the traditional wooden roller coasters where you um, really go somewhere else, almost explore like the parking lots or explore the sides of the park, uh, which is where you usually see these kinds of coasters as well. Now you do see some of the more compact wooden roller coasters that really twist in and out of themselves, which do more or less the same thing as well. Just have a lot of curves, overbank turns, uh, double ups and downs, small airtime hills, except instead of being very spread out and uh, thin in how their layout is laid out, uh, they're much more twisting in and out of themselves. You can do both things, but in this case, I really wanted to go with a more traditional looking wooden roller coaster. And I'm actually quite happy with how the skyline turned out, sort of having the hills in the back fill in the gaps in the hills on the, of the front and with that overbanked curve kind of nicely ending the skyline of the coaster. Now you guys want to have a POV of course so I'm gonna very quickly jump into the front seat and I'm not gonna be that kind of person who is gonna say we or anything else on the coaster. Sure I'll do that in real life but at this point I kind of want to comment again on the way that different parts of the coaster work. Uh, so at this point you're really pressed into the coaster, whereas on the top of that hill just now, you're really going to fly into the air out of your seat, since it has just enough time to glide over the hill like that. Um, and the same thing goes over here. You just want the tops of those hills to fly over it without slowing down too much to catch that airtime. And um, the same kind of goes for the overbanked curves. You want it to be just fast enough to still be pressed in your seat. And um, we're almost there already. And the end of the coaster is very low, just so you don't really feel like you're losing any speed, which I wanted to go for in this case, and into the final brake run to get slowed down. That was a little bit fast, could have made the brakes uh, a bit more loose and slowed down the coaster a bit slower. The most important part of the brake run at the end in-game is that we could actually run two trains on it because of it, because there's a block brake at the end of it. We could actually turn on block sectioned over here and put two trains on the coaster which will make it make quite a lot more money in the game or in real life, make it a bit more realistic, whatever you're looking for. Anyway, that'll be all for this episode of Planet Coaster College about wooden roller coasters. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you have any questions or feedback, don't be afraid to leave it in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next video.